What's up everyone? So this week I've just bought some new perfumery raw materials and today I've been diluting those down to 10% which is what I use as a baseline dilution for evaluating things. Now I think some of the materials that I got were actually kind of interesting so I thought I'd share them with you guys in this video so you guys know if you would maybe be interested in buying these raw materials as well or if maybe they don't sound good to you and then that means you can kind of know to avoid them as well. Now I got these raw materials from Artificent which is a small UK company uh, they don't currently have a web store, but they do have an ingredients list. So if you just go to their website and their contact form, I'll put a link in the description. Um, I'm sure if you just say, uh, I watched Sam's videos or Sam sent me, um, please could I get an ingredients list? I'm sure they'll send you over uh, an ingredients list with their prices. Full disclosure, I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm not getting paid to advertise them. I just think they're a good company for buying raw materials from. Anyway then, so let's get into it. The six raw materials which I'm going to cover today are Styrax Resonoids, Benzoin Siam Resonoid, Pine Needle Absolutes, um, something called Williams Ester, Lily Bell, which is a new uh, molecule, and something called Rosafen. Okay then, so firstly, why did I buy Storax Resonoid? Well, to explain that, I'm firstly going to have to introduce you to something I call the Great Storax Mystery. Uh, what's the great Storax mystery you're gonna ask? Well, basically one of my favorite scents is this incense resin, something you can put on charcoal burners, which is called Storax. Um, I've got a bag of it right here, and basically it's this kind of black powder, but what it smells of is this really nice Christmassy kind of vanilla cinnamon scent. Now, I've done a lot of research on this, but it's really hard to actually find on the internet what this stuff is, apart from it's something to do with storax, which is a certain type of plant. The thing about storax, however, that's confusing is there's two terms, storax and styrax, which are both often interchanged to kind of mean the same thing. Now, what makes this even more confusing is that styrax resonoid actually comes from the liquid amber orientalis plant or the liquid amber styrofluca plant, which are two types of plants. However, there's also a plant with the botanical name Styrax, um, which is actually the plant that's used for benzoin, which is another type of perfumery material. So as you can imagine, when referring to all these different types of resins, um, it's really easy to get confused exactly what's going on. And especially with people who are selling them, um, they sometimes name their products wrong as well, which makes it even more confusing. Anyway, the Styrax resinoid, which I got, is the one that comes from the liquid amber orientalis plant. And what basically happens is they take the plant and there's a kind of resin that comes out and they go and clean that and they dry it and then they extract it with benzene and then you get left with this kind of thick honey-like substance. And the smell is very interesting. What it smells like is, it does smell, I would say, a bit like honey. It's got this sweet kind of resinous smell, but it also has this plasticky smell, which is presumably because it contains styrene, which is something that's used to make polystyrene, which is a plastic. Now, the disappointing thing for me is that this doesn't smell like my Storex powder or the, the incense resin, exactly. It definitely has some similarities and they're both this kind of warm resinous smell, but it doesn't have the exact same cinnamon vanilla scent that I'm looking for. So basically for me, the quest is going to have to continue to find some kind of material that gives that same vanilla cinnamon like smell that I can use in perfumery. However, one thing I did find is that apparently sometimes this um, incense resin is actually made by something called Storax Calamitos um, and then apparently they extract that out and then they put it back into some charcoal which is what's used as the incense um, and then extra things like vanillin can be added to give it that intense vanilla smell which is something that does make sense to me um, but then I went further and looked up what is this Storax Calamitos thing and it turns out it's not even a species of Storax so I don't know if that's some Greek word for something else. The mystery continues either way. Um, I guess in the future, I'll have to get deeper into this, but it feels like a bit of a rabbit hole. So anyway, yeah, for now we're gonna leave it, but this brings me on to the next thing I've got, which is Benzoin CM, or the Styrax Tonkinesis. So again, this is actually completely unrelated from the Styrax resinoid. Um, this Styrax Tonkinesis, which is the species, gives something which is called Benzoin. And this stuff is benzoin siam, and siam is a port in Thailand. Um, and the reason it's called benzoin siam is because this stuff used to be traded really heavily through this certain port in Thailand. This benzoin siam, however, doesn't come from Siam, it comes from Laos, which is a country close by to Thailand. So I guess it makes sense 
Uh, that's why it would have been traded through there in the past. But yeah, this is produced by IFF um, International Flavors and Fragrances, who are the second biggest fragrance company in the world. Now the good thing about IFF is because they're such a big fragrance company, they've got so much expertise that they produce really, really good quality uh, raw materials. Now the only problem is IFF usually only sell in quantities greater than something like a kilogram or five kilograms. Um, and this is because they really aim more to sell to other companies producing perfume rather than individual people at home. So if you're just looking to pick up something like 10 grams of some of this benzoin, it's gonna be really difficult unless you can find um, a distributor or a reseller, someone who will buy from IFF and then split it up and sell it on to you at home. So if you can get something from a company like IFF, Givaudan, Firminish, I really would recommend you try to pick those materials up. Anyway, what does it smell like? Well, it's basically this really nice candy floss smell. It's really kind of silky, smooth, vanilla, that kind of thing. Um, and the reason that this is such a useful material is firstly, it can be used in an amber cord. Um, and amber accords are used all over the place in perfumery. You can just add some labdanum and some vanillin to make an amber accord. Um, so this is really important for that. Secondly, it also acts as a fixative, which means in some cases it can actually help your perfume to last longer. That's because it's this solid resinous substance and it means it can form this kind of resinous matrix on your skin, which kind of locks in some of the other molecules and can help bind them on, um, help them last a little bit longer. Anyway, next for the Pine Needle Absolute. Now, I've been wanting to get some Pine Needle Absolute for a while, and the reason is I've been wanting to create a Christmas tree accord because I really, really like the smell of Christmas trees. Um, and I've heard that Pine Needle Absolute smells a lot like that. Now, I was a bit surprised because this really wasn't the smell that I got when I smelt this. What I thought was this really smells a lot more like oak moss, that kind of mossy forest floor, almost a little bit sweaty, um, quite thick and heavy forest kind of smell. That said, there definitely is some facets of pine wood in here as well. And one idea that I'm thinking is this could really be a nice base for a pine wood accord. And then maybe if I add some pine essential oil, which is a lot more bright um, and airy, um, maybe that would actually combine really well and create a balanced uh, pine accord that would both have kind of that top part of the pine tree and also that bottom more, more uh, woody, more more mossy part of the pine tree as well. So that's something to try, I haven't tried it yet. The other thing this makes me think of is it makes me imagine I'm in some kind of prehistoric dinosaur forest. Um, it makes me imagine I'm surrounded by all these ancient kind of pine trees. Maybe it's because it gives me a bit of like an old museum smell as well. Um, I don't know, but I really do quite like this and I think it's really, really cool. So I would recommend you try it if you like that kind of earthy, mossy, foresty smells, that kind of thing. Anyway, what this molecule smells like is the skin of a pear. It's got that kind of seedy, pippy, uh, pear skin aroma. It's that quite delicate pear smell, uh, which I think is really nice because I haven't smelled something like this in a molecule before. Um, a lot of the fruity molecules can really come across as quite heavy-handed and quite sweet and overpowering. This, again, is strong, and if it's on its own, it is quite overpowering. But it's a lot more soft, it's a lot more fresh, it's a lot more kind of spring-like, and it's the kind of thing that um, I can imagine adding to a perfume if I wanted to add a green fruity note. But say I wanted to blend it with some florals and have much more of a delicate um, perfume with a hint of fruitiness or a hint of greenness. For example, something like a floral breezy spring kind of perfume, then I could really see myself adding this molecule as something in kind of that mid-note, top-note region just to add a little boost, add a little bit of freshness and add a bit of character. Um, I really, really like this and I'm quite excited to start using it and see what I can do with it. And then just to wrap up, I've got two more molecules here, which are Lilybell and Rosafen. Uh, these two are actually given us free samples, which I thought was really, really nice because I didn't even order them. So first up, Rosafen. Uh, this actually is really, really nice. It's basically a rose molecule. Um, it's a bit like citronella, a bit like geranial. And what this really reminds me of is Turkish Delight. And I think for a single molecule, um, the amount of kind of rose impression it gives is actually really, really nice. So if you're making a rose accord or something like that, um, I think this would really fit quite well, actually. Now, the next thing is Lilybell. Now, Lilybell is, I guess, kind of a, a big thing at the moment, or a lot of people are kind of excited about it. And the reason for this is it's a relatively new Lily of the Valley molecule. Lily of the Valley is a certain type of flower which is actually used in perfumery quite a lot, so it's quite an important scent. And they had two very important molecules uh, which had a Lily of the Valley uh, scent, and these were called Lilial 
and Lyral, and both of these were really recently, in just the last couple of years, actually banned by the IFRA, so they can no longer be used uh, by perfumes conforming to IFRA standards. So what this meant was now perfumers have been rushing to search for new molecules that also give a good Lily of the Valley scent, um, and this particular one called Lily Bell, this was actually developed by a company called Simrise um, a few years back, but they held it as what's called a captive molecule. And a captive molecule is basically when a company makes a molecule, but they patent it, and that basically means that no other companies can use it. And what they generally do is that they keep it for themselves, which is why it's a captive, because it's in captivity. Only their perfumers can make perfumes with that molecule. Um, but what Simrise actually decided to do recently was to release this molecule for sale. So now um, other perfume companies and other perfumers can go and buy this Lily Bell, and it turns out that a lot of people think this could be a really good Lily of the Valley molecule, especially in replacing those um, Lyral, those Lilyal formulas that have been made um, in the past. Anyway, how does it smell? Well, I think this is really nice actually. It reminds me a bit of Hydroxy Citronellal and Sylvial. Um, what it is basically is this very kind of fresh, watery, airy, um, that kind of scent, and it smells kind of floral as well. Um, and actually, I do think this one is really, really nice. Um, there are a few molecules that smell very similar, like the ones I just mentioned, but in particular, this Lily Bell actually smells quite nice and clean, which is definitely something you want. Um, if you're making this kind of Lily of the Valley perfume, you want it to be very fresh, very clean. Um, and I think this this is really nice. So if you're looking for those kind of molecules, Lily of the Valley scents, that kind of thing, I really do think this could work well. I've not got much experience myself with making a Lily of the Valley scent or a Lily of the Valley Accord, um, but now I've got this, maybe at some point I'll try because it actually seems like it would be quite nice um, and it seems like it would be quite an interesting thing to do. Anyway, anyway, that's about it. I know it was a bit of a random video. All of these materials were a little bit random, uh, but I thought actually these materials were already interesting to smell and definitely all of these materials I would actually recommend as well. There's something about each of these which I definitely think um, could be used really well in certain situations. So if you're interested in making any of the calls I talked about in this video, so maybe a pear accord, um, maybe get some of that Williams Esther. If you're interested in making a rose accord, maybe some of that Rosafen, a Lily of the Valley accord, I think the Lily Bell is really nice. And again, for the pine tree, um, absolute, the, if you're trying to make a forest smell, I think that's really good. And also if you're trying to make a amber accord, I do think that that benzoin siam, especially that IFF version, which I have, is really, really nice. And I think that will do you really well for that kind of accord. The Styrax, I don't really know what you're going to do with that, but I think with maybe some kind of um, oriental uh, kind of balsamic accord, and maybe mix it with things like frankincense, myrrh, benzoin, I think you could probably make some nice kind of sweet, spicy accord uh, with that as well. Though again, I'm not sure because it's still got that styrene top note a bit, so you're probably not going to have to use it too strongly. Also with the Styrax, I think it's limited a fair bit by the IFRA, so you have to take that into consideration as well. Anyway, so that's it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and maybe got some ideas. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time with some fresh perfumery content.